Well, hello everyone, it's Andrew Bro, and in this video, I'll be walking you through an introduction to macOS. This video is specifically intended for anyone moving over to macOS from uh, a Windows device or maybe a Chromebook, and you don't know much about Mac, so you're uh, opening it up for the first time. I'm gonna just show you around the macOS interface and then we'll take a look at some files and folders and maybe we'll even get into kind of what I do to optimize the experience, my experience specifically um, on a Mac. So first let's talk about some different parts of the OS that you're gonna see when you log in for the first time. So right down here at the bottom, we have the dock, and this is where you can dock applications that you're going to use every single day. It also gives you quick access into Finder, which we'll take a look at here in a minute. That's how you're gonna find your files and folders. We've got uh, your launch pad here. If you click on that, it's gonna show you all the different applications that are currently on your Mac. These are ones that are uh, by default already on your Mac. And if we slide over here, we can see some other applications that I've added over time. The next part of the interface is the toolbar. So we'll see right up here in the top left and right of my screen, we've got this toolbar. Uh, we can see by default, even with nothing open, um, that we're sitting on Finder and we've got a menu for file, edit, view, uh, all that kind of stuff up here. Now, what's very different about Mac OS versus, uh, say, Windows, is that whenever you open an application in Windows, you have a toolbar at the top of that window. So, for example, we'll just go ahead and open up the Notes application, and we'll notice that on Mac OS, it's very different, right? This toolbar across the top of the Mac screen has now changed to notes. It is no longer saying finder on there. Um, so Mac treats the toolbar on any application uh, very differently. It always locks it to the top of the screen and it's outside of the application window. Now on the upper right hand side of the toolbar, we're going to see well, we got our date and time and we have this little icon here, which opens up Control Center, allows us to do some things very quickly, like connecting to Wi-Fi, turning on and off Bluetooth, maybe setting a focus or turning on some settings like Stage Manager and accessing screen mirroring, kind of some advanced stuff that we'll get into way later. We also can see this little icon, which opens up the Spotlight Search but I'll show you a better way to do that here in just a little bit. And then I also have on my Mac some icons that only show up because of specific applications that are loaded on my Mac. So the most basic ones that you're gonna see are going to be um, the icon that's gonna show your battery level, Wi-Fi spotlight, and control center, as well as the date and time. Another thing about a Mac that is very different from Windows is that when you close an application window, it does not completely close that application. So for, for instance, if I close out of the Notes app, we'll notice that the toolbar has not changed. It still says that I'm in Notes. And down here in the dock, we'll notice there's a little dot underneath the Notes app. That's letting me know that the Notes app is still open. So I can click on Notes again, it'll very quickly open up my Notes app versus if I open an app that has not been opened before, we'll notice that it takes just a split second longer for that app to open up. So how do we close the app rather than just closing the window for the application? Well, there's a couple of different ways to do it, but if you click on the name of the application up here in the toolbar, we can see that there is now a quit menu, or we can hit Command 
Q. So this symbol here, if you look down at your keyboard, you'll see that that symbol is on the Command key right next to the space bar. So we can just hit Command Q with this window active, right, and it's going to close out of that application. So let's go ahead, we'll open up Notes. We can see we've got Notes now. If I were to hit Command Q, it's going to close my Notes app. So if I activate Reminders and then hit Command Q, it's going to close the Reminders app. All right, we'll go ahead and close out of Notes. And let's move into how to locate files and folders. I'm currently logged in as a new user on this Mac, so I don't currently have any files uh, on my desktop or in my Documents folder. But let's take a look at how to find these folders. What we're going to do is we're going to come down to the dock and then we're going to click on Finder. And this is going to open up a new window that allows us to look at our desktop folder right here and our documents folder. Let's go ahead and create a new folder here inside of our documents. There's a couple of ways that we can do this. First, with the window active, we can come up to File and say New Folder. Or we can press Shift-Command-N. Another way, if you're using a trackpad on, say, a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, you can just two-finger click inside of this area on the trackpad and then click New Folder. I'll go ahead and call this one Examples and then hit Return. Now, there are several different ways that we can view our Finder windows. Right now, we're looking at everything in columns. But you can also view it as an icon, as a list, or as a gallery. I prefer to use columns because then I can quickly see the folder tree to get to the exact file that I'm looking for. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to this quick introduction of Mac OS. If you have questions about how to use your Mac, drop down below and leave me a question or a comment, and I'll make sure to include that in another video. Uh, in the next video in this series, we'll be taking a look at how to optimize the dock and also some other settings that I highly recommend that you use to just optimize your experience on your Mac. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to this video. If you want to learn more about Mac OS, iOS, iPad OS, and how to seamlessly make all of these devices work together, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Drop down below and leave me a comment or a question. I'd love to address it in a future video. Take care. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.